Okay, again, we were referring to the address. Remember, this is an IP address right here. I can use that, or I could use, or I can use raskoff.com. Hey, it goes to the same place. Or I can put the domain name, the IP address in there. Okay, so again, the computers in between are called domain name servers that convert the letters to numbers. Did we look at how to buy a domain name? Did we go to GoDaddy yet? No. Okay, let's go. We're going to learn. So again, we're talking internet. You saw the domain name. We wrote URL. What is that? We can go to GoDaddy. Right. You all saw the commercial on, on uh, Super Bowl. I didn't see the GoDaddy commercial, but I'm sure there was one. Okay, so if you want to buy a web domain, you can purchase it. What are you purchasing? You're actually purchasing the rights to use the name. You're not necessarily buying the server. Okay, so when you have a web site or what we talk um, web hosting, you need two things. You need one, the name. Two, you need the, the physical computer to do that. So you're actually buying two things. GoDaddy will, will kind of bundle that all together in one price for you. Um, but yes. Why do you have to buy it off of them? You don't have to buy it off them. You can buy it anywhere. There's plenty of places you can buy domains. It's just they're popular because they advertise. But I bought my domain at Dotster. How long? How, how long has GoDaddy been around? Do you I know don't know. Them? Not too long. No. Dotster. I bought my domain name here at Dotster. Okay. There's a whole bunch of places you can buy domains. Okay. They buy domains. And uh, you could type in what you want. I remember I was I was teaching in Europe one time, and in, in, in one of the, my assistant, I actually had an assistant back there, but my assistant had, had Harry Clam was a domain name that he owned. So you can buy them and just have them without you know building a website. And people, there's plenty of companies out there they just buy domain names, okay. And so uh, he had Harry Clam. That was it. I think it was Harry Clam. I don't know if it's still available. But somebody offered him $50 for it, and he, he turned them down. And then it, like about uh, six months later, he, 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 it, it expired. When you buy a domain, you buy it for a year. I mean, you can buy two years' worth or three years' worth. But you're buying a short time frame when you buy an address on the Internet. And if you don't renew it, it will expire, and somebody else can take it. Okay, so in this case, Harry Clam is taken. But of course, you can get other ones. .co, .net is what? Network, right? Dot website, I don't know, these are kind of new names here. Dot US, dot org is what, an organization, right? Dot TV, and of course you got the new porn one is what? Dot XXX, you can buy that too. Didn't know that. Okay, so you got a whole bunch of different new domains. Uh, let's look for another one. Anybody got a, a business idea? We got business. Nobody has a business idea, or you don't want to tell us. No. I I have somebody at Mission. I teach a class at Mission. He he's building an app about uh, um travel. What was his domain? It was a uh, uh, travel travel um travel something. What was it? Travel help? No, something like that. Travel help available. No, somebody's already taken it. If you wanna, if you find a name you like and you're like, I want that, I want that name, you can find out who owns it and try and buy it from them. Okay, so you can do that to find out who owns websites. You can go to the website. Um, um, what was it? Who is? Who is? Dot um, net maybe. Yeah, that's it. Who is .net? So if you go to who is .net and put in a domain name, and you want to find out who owns a domain name. Let's find out who owns West Valley. .edu. Let's find out. Hey, maybe we'll buy that from somebody. Let's see. Who is who owns West Valley .edu? Oh, look! Make me an offer. <laughs> so down here at the bottom, it'll tell you. Th these are the people that registered it, edu cause. Um, it'll tell you where it's at. You'll notice there is some server information in there. 
the people that maintain the um, the web pages and the domain names. There's an organization called the ICANN.org. Okay, these people right here. It'll tell you when it was registered. Westvalley.edu was registered October 18th, 1996. Is when he started the web page. Again, there's two sites, uh, the ICANN here and the in Internic right here. Both of them kind of manage the web pages. So again, if you want to manage your site, it's being ICANN. This is the group that maintains the web addresses, ICANN.org. In addition, you also have the... Um, Uh, where's the other one? Oh, what was the other one? Who is? Uh, this one, go to here. Public information regarding internet domain name registration services. Okay, you can transfer a name from one person to the other. You can buy it. In fact, I love telling my story about wine. Because I like wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back in 1997, I remember that day, there was a company that was trying to sell wine online. It was legal back then to sell wine online. And it, the company was called virtualvineyards.com. Virtualvineyard.com. And of course, nobody could remember virtualvineyard.com. I mean, you can imagine, you know, sitting at a party and say, oh, I bought this wine at Virtual Vineyards. So the people that own virtual vineyards wanted wine.com. Much easier to remember. Hey, I bought this at wine.com. But wine.com was the name was registered to somebody who had a, a group of friends that lived in Napa. And uh, they were just wine friends. They didn't have a business at all. They just had a, a simple, you know, plain text website with, you know, our recommendations of wines. That's all it was. So virtual vineyards approached them and said, we want to buy wine.com. And they, they bought it for $2 million. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy drives around Napa now in a Porsche, it said in the article as read that in. Yeah. So you see a guy in a Porsche in Napa, it's probably that dude, right? Wow. No, maybe not, but hey. Okay, so wine.com. So you can buy and sell domain names. There's companies that buy a whole bunch of them. Okay, but they're a little bit pricey. You know, if you want to pay, I think I pay almost $14 a year for my name, raskoff.com. But again, it's a business expense. You can write it off in your taxes. There you go, business expense. Okay, so uh, again, you can search to find out who is. So who do we want to look up? Who owns uh, um, what? Yahoo? Who owns Yahoo? <laughs> Yahoo. Look, January 18th, 1995, Yahoo was registered. Look at that. It was updated January 14th, 2015. Of course, they're hiding the actual owners there. You can, you can, hide, you can hide your information from people. Um, anybody else got a, you want to look up who owns a website? iBaby. Who owns iBaby? That's a, one of my students works at this company. They make baby supplies and they, they have a whole display inside of, uh, what's it, Babies R Us? Uh, doesn't tell me they're hiding it. <laughs> well, I guess that could be, you could go either way, iBaby, you know. Okay. So, any questions? How much does a domain name cost? Did we write that down? How much does it mean? How much does it cost a GoDaddy? I forgot. GoDaddy. We didn't see how we didn't put it in there. So what, what business do we want to do? Coffee for you. Hey, that sounds like a good name. Coffee for you. Nice website. Free coffee. Free coffee. Maybe that would have been a good name. Sorry, your name is not available. Ooh. Okay. I was 
How about uh, free coffee? <laughs> oh, spell it right. Free coffee. Sorry, free coffee is taken. <laughs> How about free coffee? Ah, if you can't get the name that you're looking for, maybe add a location to it. That always helps. You can say free coffee, uh, Saratoga. Oh, watch that. Let's see. Yes, it's available. See? So if you've got a name and it's taken, maybe add the location to it, especially if it's a business somewhere. That helps a lot. So how much does it cost? Well, it says it costs three nine three ninety nine, but they're probably asking you, you they want you for two years when you price. I don't know. Let's select. Let's see. Let's see how much it costs. Select. Yeah. Yeah. Protect your name. Oh, buy the other ones. So nobody squats. You know, come, not like a, a squatter would be somebody who takes your land and says, you know sits on your land for a while, right? Squatter. Well, they have you know domain name squatters, people that take names that are similar, but .net. So let's see. So if we continue with cart, oh, you got to put in my information. Oh, they want you to sign up for for host building an email. What was that two thousand one hundred eighty eight dollar one? Right Where? There. Where's that? I'm sorry. Uh, go back to the previous page. There was a two thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollar one. Yeah. Uh, keep going down. There it is. Prime Oh, premium. I don't know what that means, but free dash coffee dot com. $2,188. There you go. Or you can do location, discount, more results. Free coffee Saratoga bar. Guru, look at that one. Tips, restaurant today, land, photo. They, they got all kinds of extensions. Now, the problem with all these extensions, they don't show up in Google. They don't. Google, what you want to have. If you want to be in Google, you need to have the .com. That's, I mean, literally, if you go, hey, let's go to Google, let's try. Go to Google. All those crazy names they got, dot this, dot that. If you go into Google, let's type in free coffee. Yeah, let's see what comes up. Ooh, free Chick-fil-A. Okay. Here. This is going to be free coffee, free .com. See, Starbucks.com, FoxNews.com. All you.com, your coffee, your way.com, new McDonald's.com, new McDonald's.com, <coughs> Bloomberg News.com. Here, look, Krispy Kreme.com, Washington Post.com, Facebook.com, Facebook.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com. There's not one dot US, not one dot EDU, not one dot net. There is a dot org. There might be a dot org. Uh, one. Oh, this is an ad. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, but that's not in the that's not organic. So when you're looking at listings inside of Google, okay, you're looking at multiple things. You got ad, ad, and they call this organic search. A search that is not an ad. That's why it's called organic. It's this one over here. These are organic. <coughs> okay, organic <coughs> is not an ad. So again, you can see everything is dot com dot com. So even though GoDaddy's offering all these crazy extensions on your name, right? Dot this dot net dot this dot that dot info. None of them really show up well. Okay? In a search engine. You really want to get the dot com. So if you're starting a business, try and get dot com. Again, try and tweak the name a little bit so it relates. Maybe location is probably the easiest way. Because, you know, free coffee San Jose. Hey. Free coffee, Saratoga. Hey. <coughs> okay. Free coffee, Saratoga singles. Hey, there we go. Let's select that one. Now, how much is my bill? Continue shopping. Okay, so notice how they're asking you some other stuff. You want website building? Do you want web hosting? What is the hosting? Well, again, 
Remember I talked about how I have a computer in New Jersey? You need a computer that's connected to the internet to be able to see the web page. Okay, you can just buy a name, that's not going to get you anywhere. You need to have some files that people can see, like a web page. Okay, see, my web page. If I can find it again, here we go. Raskop.com. Okay, N typical web page, typical click links. You can look at what it's made of. Of course, it's made of HTML. If we look at the web developer page source, we can see the web HTML. Very old, bad code. But hey, it's there. Okay, so what does HTML stand for? This is on the test. Hypertext markup language. Okay, so that's on the test. Again, let's go to Wikipedia. Everything on Wikipedia is true and correct. HTML. HTML stands for markup language used to create web page. It's written in the form of HTML elements consisting of tags and closed angle brackets. These brackets are called chevrons, actually, these little angle brackets. We call them chevrons. Okay. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. Hypertext markup language. Okay. The founder uh, who, who developed HTML was Tim Berners-Lee. That's on the test. Tim Berners-Lee developed HTML. Remember that name. That's on the test, Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, also on the test is the guy who invented uh, email. We should look that up. Who invented email? Who invented email? Inverted. No, invent. <laughs> invented email. There we go. Invented email. Who invented email? Email. I guess we can't ask questions here, do we? Um, There it is. Remember, the email always has an at sign in it. That's how one way. Uh, who invented the email? I swear that's on the test. I gotta find out who invented the email. Who invented the email? I don't know. I know it's on the test somewhere. Can I Google search it? I don't know. Yeah, maybe search it and tell us. I don't remember. Um, oh, and then, of course, the people that invented the TCPIP. Again, they talked about in the video the TCP IP, the Internet Protocol Suite, Computer Networking, TCP IE, the most important protocol, Transmission Protocol, Internet Protocol. Okay, that's how it knows where all the addresses go. Remember they talked about that. And uh, um, uh, Vin and Khan, that's, that's who invented. Oh, here it is. Vin, Vinton, and Robert Khan. These two are on the test. Who invented TCPI? And it says Bill Gates and Steve Jobs is one answer, so you say no to that one. And Robert Kahn and, and Vinton, how would you say his last name? Surf? 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 Yeah, Did Surf. Yeah, they invented the TCPIP. <coughs> okay, these two names right here, this one and this one. Don't click on Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Remember the test are multiple choice. So we got funny, we got funny ones like that. Okay. It's a, the question on the test asks, who invented the TCPIP in, in the two names of this one and this one together, these two guys, okay? You got that? You guys all got that one? Okay, good. Who invented the TCPIP? Choose this answer, these guys, okay? Not Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Okay, 
You don't need to know mm, too much more than that. Okay, where were we at? We were buying domain names. We we watched the video. Um, we f did we find out how much it was? Oh, I guess. I don't know. What was another name we were looking for? Free coffee, was it? Yeah. Free coffee. Free. Coffee. How about free apples? Hey, free apples. I got an apple here. How about free pizza? Oh, free apples is available. Look at that. Freeapples.com. Oh, somebody owns it. Oh, current bid is $10,000. Wow. Oh. Well, it's on auction. You want you want to put a bid in? <coughs> Again, though, you can buy the freeapples.info, but will you show up in Google? Probably not. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Seriously, someone's bidding $10,000 for that. Uh, so free apples. Yeah, some people are bidding, so they auction off the names. You can buy them and auction them. Down. Okay, let's move back to uh, Angel. See what else is on there. So we watch this one. Uh, here's some more videos. I don't know if we need to watch these ones. Uh, I don't like those ones. Um, there was another video, wasn't there? Hold on. Oh, this one. I don't know. It's kind of boring. I don't know. We, I don't know if we could sit through this whole video. Uh, there's, you know, it's a bunch of old guys who've invented the internet. How about that? Welcome, everyone, to the first in a series of presentations that will attempt to okay, maybe consider. We already know that. Uh oh. Up at Harbor in October 19th. Consider what computers were like in the 1950s to increase overall computer power and to decentralize information. We already know that. So in 1968, Harper enlisted the help of the company Bolt, Beranek and Newman to create a computer network. Computers running on four. We already saw that in the other video. University of California and the University we saw of UCLA's we saw important that. decision. Became oh, here we go. This is important transfer. stuff here. Early on, the team recognized the need for two specific tasks. Create a way for users to log into the system remotely Tell and to make it possible to move files from one machine to another. Okay, so Telnet was a way that you could connect to a, uh, a computer from the internet from a distance. Okay, so it allowed you to log in and, and access it. If you wanted to send files from one computer to another, we use something called FTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. I think that's on the test too. I think I don't know. Let me write it down so you have it. Again, FTP File Transfer Protocol. FTP File Transfer File Transfer Protocol. Okay. So that's one way that we would transfer files from one to the other. I remember right. early Telnet software we used to use called Archie. Telnet was a way to transfer. To remotely connect to a computer to access it. So you, you, you were here, I'm here, client, I want to connect to another computer and access it. I use Telnet. FTP was a way of so and early Telnet uh, I remember was uh, um, the the um, what was the, the Archie um, what was that cartoon um, back in the seventies Archie um, Archie um, 
no clue. The Archies. The Ar- I think it was called the Archies, wasn't it? I don't know. But they, they, I, I still have that software, too, from 1995. I have a, a CD from 1995. It has all the old software on it. What was the first browser? First browser? I, that's on the test. Didn't I tell you that, right? What was the first browser? And who invented the first browser? Yeah, isn't that like oh, But didn't we have that already? We talked about this in class, didn't we? That's the burden. The first browser was called Mosaic. Oh, Mosaic. No, okay. First web browser. Mosaic. No. Mosaic, first web browser. That's on the test. Mosaic, first web browser. Okay. I still have a copy of it on a CD somewhere. And I still have the original book from Netscape, the first version of Netscape Navigator, okay, which was the second real browser. It was called Netscape Navigator. I actually bought a, a, the manual that came with it, and I still have it. I'm thinking someday it'll be worth money. I'll be on one of those, you know, those auction sites. Maybe I'll go to Vegas and, and ask that the, the dude at the pawn store stars, right? What is it? Where you go in and you, you, you sell them stuff. They'll, he'll look at me like, well, that's just, you just throw it away probably, but still. Okay. Okay, again, Tim Berners-Lee, that's on the test too, right? He invented the HT, HTML or the World Wide Web. What is the largest, what is the largest uh, uh, traffic on the internet? Ads. What takes up most space on the internet? Ads. No. Yeah. Well. Like, no. 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 What, what, what transfers most over the internet? What is the? What takes up all the space? Email. Email now. Email's tiny. Really? Images. Video, right? You guys watch Netflix. YouTube. Video is the largest section. In d- Um, what did I just say? It was uh, internet, internet um, use. Uh, they had a chart here somewhere. <coughs> right here, the web is dead. Long live here. So here's a chart. Okay, let's just look. Remember we talked about Telnet? There it is. Telnet is pretty much no more. Email ooh, is dying pretty much too. FTP, ooh, nothing anymore. Okay, other, I don't know what that means. News groups, ooh, what is a news group? Oh. Well, news groups go back in time in, in that if you wanted to uh, post a question and have somebody answer it, you could do use a news group. It's basically a question and answer, and it was a command line kind of thing. You would just and you would you would in each kind of category had its own group to it. Right? Back in the, like 1995, I was, I was in New York and I was moving to California. I went into the jobs. They had jobs news groups and I could look for job postings before Craigslist kind of thing was very popular, even though Craigslist was around in 1995. You could look in news groups and it was basically a way and, and all it was was you, you logged in, you would see a list of you know questions and answers. Okay, news groups. There they are. They're dead too. And DNS, uh, that's still around. Um, but again, you got peer to peer. What is peer to peer? What's peer to peer? File sharing, right? Video is the largest right there. See it? <coughs> 51% of the total internet data is video and then down here is web just web pages is only 23 percent and peer-to-peer file sharing all you people are you know sending your movies back and forth and music you guys don't do file sharing do you no you don't steal stuff and share it with your friends I'm good okay I don't know. You guys want to take a break? I've been yapping for an hour. Yeah? 
Okay, let's take 10 minutes. We'll take a break. Yeah. We'll come back and we'll learn how Google works. Okay. So let's talk about Google. Again, how Google works. In this case, we've already talked about domain names. I talked a little bit about how Google... Google mostly ranks uh, web pages. How Google works is it... It networks in, it networks out using something called a spider. And what is a spider? A spider is a is a computer program that goes from one web page to the other web page to the other web page, reading content and sending all that data back to its index. Index is the giant computer database that Google uses. So whenever you type in a search, wine making Notice how Google starts giving you results right away. And what was that called? What was the technology behind that? It's called AJAX, like the stuff you clean your floor with, AJAX, right? AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript, which means that there's data being sent to Google. As soon as you type a, a letter in, you can see you start getting results. Every time I click the keyboard, <coughs> Google is checking which letter on the key that I'm selecting and sends that to its database and then gives me suggestions. Wine train, hey. Wine searcher. Wine speculator, hey. Okay. As soon as you choose the result or just get close to it, it starts giving you the results down here. Again, you have these uh, ads, as you can see here. These are ads. People pay for that. How much does it cost to advertise on Google? Well, it varies a lot. Usually what you pay for is cost per compressions. Cost per impressions. M, impressions. C, M, cost. C, P, M. C, P, M. Cost per impressions. And I'll show you how much they cost in a minute. Let's just again Google's all about words words that they use um, so let, let's go to Wikipedia so you got that for the test I think that that is on the test I know that Wikipedia Wikipedia dot org is that Wikipedia there it is Ajax Ajax programming. Okay, here it is. It's called asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Okay. What's that? No test. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you. That's oh, on the okay. test. You write it down. Come on. Get. The question on the test ask you. The question on the test ask is, what technology is be be behind the search results that show up in Google as you're typing on the keyboard? And your answer is going to be. Ajax, okay. Ajax is short for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So again, what is happening is the data is automatically being sent, okay, being sent. The other one that's on the test that we haven't maybe talked about is the HTT protocol, HTTP, HTTP. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Okay, that is the World Wide Web Protocol. So, whenever you type in an address, okay, like up here, like we're used to typing www. You know, Google. Com, right? Now you don't really have to put the HTTP, but really it is in front of there is an HTTP. I mean, you can put in the HTTP if you want, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com, and it goes there. Notice also, as you might see, an HTTPS right there. See the S up there? S stands for secure. You ever notice when you go to your email, if you go in there, see how it says HTTPS? S stands for secure. That's how you know you're on a, a, a site that is secure. How is it secured? It's, it's being encrypted. The data is being encrypted as it's sent. Okay, that way hackers can't hack in, right? Think about it. If you go to your Yahoo email or something like that, if I go to yahoo.com, look, there's an S right there. See that? They secure this because they know you're going to be, hey, go into my email right there. Hey, look, there's an S right there. There's an S right there for my email link logging in. 
If you don't see the S there, most likely it's probably a fake site that is probably going to steal your information. You ever go to a fake site before? Okay. You ever go typing Yahoo or YouTube wrong? YouTube like that. You type in two U's, two. What's what's going to happen now? Uh oh, something bad's going to happen. Okay, it goes somewhere else. Okay. Well, it doesn't look there. There's one that looks kind of real close to YouTube, but it's not quite the same. So they make near sites. Okay, so again, protocols. We talked a little bit about uh, HTTP. That's the protocol for the World Wide Web. That's what the protocol for that. Now we talked about some other protocols tonight. The TCP or what was it? No, the the FTP, right? File transfer protocol. It's a different protocol. They actually use different ports. The one for the World Wide Web is called port 80. What a port is is like a like a, a like a network connection. So the network connection for the HTTP is called port 80. The network connection for the FTP is called port 21. Port 21. You don't have to remember that one. I don't think that's on the test, but I'm just pointing it out. Uh, where were we? HTTP. Um, okay. So again, how Yahoo works is Yahoo works by something called a spider or a web crawler or a web crawler. What is a web crawler? Web crawler is an internet bot that systematically browses the World Wide Web, typically for the purpose of web indexing. A web crawler may also be called a spider or ant or automatically indexer. The search engines and some other sites use web crawling or spidering software to update their web content or indexes. Other site web content web crawlers can copy all the pages they visit and later processing by search engines. So in, in Google, it's called Googlebot. So the spider, okay, the spider, the web crawler and spider is just a, like a general term to describe the technology behind <coughs> the way Google works. But in this case, um, the one in the software specifically for Google is called Googlebot. 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 Googlebot is the search bot software used by Google which collects documents from the web to build a searchable index for the Google search engine. If you do not want to be in Google, you can put in your code in your HTML code this Googlebot content no follow. What does that tell Google? Cuz you might not want to be in Google, right? You might not want to have your web page in Google if you make websites and you don't want to be in Google. You would put this in your code in your HTML Googlebot content no follow. What that does is tell Google not to take your data and put it in their index. Googlebot follows links. Links on the internet start with a href. Href. Again, there's the Ajax calls. Ajax calls. What well, Ajax call is when you start typing in your keyboard and it sends the data. Okay, let's watch a video. <coughs> this guy, this guy works for Google. He probably has the um, best videos. This guy right here. Hi, my name is Matt Cutts. I'm an engineer in the quality group at Google, and I'd like to talk today about what happens when you do a web search. The first thing to understand is that when you do a Google search, you aren't actually searching the web. You're searching Google's index of the web, or at least as much of it as we can find. We do this with software programs called spiders. Spiders start by fetching a few web pages, then they follow the links on those pages and fetch the pages they point to and follow all the links on those pages and fetch the pages they link to and so on until we've indexed a pretty big chunk of the web many billions of pages stored across thousands of machines now suppose I want to know how fast a cheetah can run I type in my search say cheetah running speed and hit return 
Our software searches our index to find every page that includes those search terms. In this case, there are hundreds of thousands of possible results. How does Google decide which few documents I really want? By asking questions, more than 200 of them, like, how many times does this page contain your keywords? Do the words appear in the title, in the URL, directly adjacent? Does the page include synonyms for those words? Is this page from a quality website, or is it low quality, even spammy? That's called link priority. Link priority is the term that Google uses to... Let, let me give you an example. Google will rank you higher in their search engine if you have a lot of people that link to you, and you link to them. Right? Like, like news sites, mm -hmm. Huffington Post, ABC, whatever, I don't know, NBC, whatever news. They have a lot of links, people linking to them and then them linking to them. That's what he's kind of talking about. The, if you've got a, a popular site or link popularity, popular, then we're going to rank you higher. That's a very important part of Google. That's why being popular is important. What is this page's page rank? That's a formula invented by our founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, that rates a web page's importance by looking at how many outside links point to it and how important those links are. Finally, we combine all those factors together to produce each page's overall score and send you back your search results about half a second after you submit your search. At Google, we take our commitment to delivering useful and impartial search results very seriously. We don't ever accept payment to add a site to our index, update it more often, or improve its ranking. Let's take a look at my search results. Each entry includes a title, a URL, and a snippet of text to help me decide whether this page is what I'm looking for. I also see links to similar pages, Google's most recent stored version of that page, and related searches that I might want to try next. And sometimes, along the right and at the top, I'll see ads. We take our advertising business very seriously as well, both our commitment to deliver the best possible audience for advertisers and to strive to only show ads that you really want to see. We're very careful to distinguish your ads from regular search results. And we won't show you any ads at all if we can't find any that we think will help you find the information you're looking for, which in this case, the cheetah's top running speed is more than 60 miles an hour. Thanks for watching. I hope this made Google a little bit more understandable. Now you'll be a smarter search person, right? I don't know. Does that make sense? Do I have to show you any more searching? Googlebot searches the web, brings back an index. Let's see how much words cost. Okay, so if you search on Google, and let's go again. Let's search on Google. So let's search on wine. What we're we doing? Wine making? Oh, make. M A K. Making? Wine making? You'll see uh, this is an ad. Wine making kit, but not too many ads. Not too many ads here. They have location. Oh, here's a bunch of ads over here. So how much who, who how much does it cost to, to pay for wine making? Again, you pay for impressions. What is impression? Well impression is the ad itself. Okay. You, and you also can pay for the clicking. And Google will guarantee you a specific amount of clicks okay, per day. So to pay for Google, let's talk about paying for it. Um, you can go into keyword, Q 
key word tool. There it is. Keyword tool. There it is. Oh, I have to sign in. Okay, there we go. Nary got enough information on you. And thanks for all you, your, 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 your assignments. A lot of you uh, in, in your assignment wrote that you Googled yourself and saw what came up. Some of you said nothing came up. So some people are, so a good, you know, good thing is to try that sometimes, right? Search your name on Google and see what shows up. Hopefully good stuff. I always get the bad stuff coming up. You know, rate my professors, guys, an idiot. Can't. It's okay. I've been called idiot many times. Yeah, that's not nice. Okay, here we go. Let's find out how much it costs. This is why they have those big buildings and they got billions of dollars. They they you buy in words, buying words. Hold on, we're we're close. Here we go. We're close. Okay, um, where is it? Where is it? Build a key. How to use keyword planner? Where's my keyword planner? Keyword. What would you like to do? Search for new keywords. Okay, let's look. Uh, what kind of words you want to use? What do you want to buy? What kind of word? What do you search for? Google. Shoes. Shoes. Just shoes. Remember, you you would. Phrase? You never search for one word, do you? You always search for multiple words. What kind of shoes? I don't. I don't know different shoes. Loafers? High heels? High spell heels. Heels? High heels? Yeah. Shoes? Okay, what other kind of shoes do we got? What's that? No, just tell me, spell it for me. Come on, give me another boots. Jeez, boots. You know, work boots. That's a good word. Work boots. What about everybody grad? Slippers, huh? Running shoes. Running shoes. Running shoes. Sandals. Sandy. Sandals. Is that sandals? Sandals. What? It's A L S. Sandals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other kind of shoes? Um, soccer shoes. Soccer? Soccer, so C C O soccer? No. I spell soccer. C C E R. C C what? Two C's. C E R S. O R? E R S. E R S? Soccer? Shoes? Slippers? Did I do slippers yet? Uh uh. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so you put in a bunch of words. Hey, we're going to find out how much it costs for these words right now. Google will tell you. Because they want you to buy words. They want you to buy. Okay, let's get our ideas. Okay, let's see. Sandals is searched on an average monthly search of 445,000 times per Month. This was a monthly average search. Work boots, eighty-eight thousand. Soccer shoes, a hundred thousand. Women's heels. Oh, I thought I didn't put a high heels. Heel shoes. Oh, they give you. They give you other ones. They're they're giving you suggestions on what you want. And so then you see a price over here. You're like, wow, it costs two dollars to advertise women's boots. Okay, so let's add. What do we want to do? Let's see if we want that. Okay, let's see. What did, what was it? Women's boots. Okay, so it's going to cost you about. Let's see. Slippers. Three 
So it's going to cost you about uh, uh, at least if you. So they will show an ad 212,000 times for you. You're going to get around 2,842 clicks, and it's going to cost you $1.53 per click at a total of $1,085 to advertise for um, at least this. this there's different ways, you know. They don't give you one set price. I mean, you can go all the way up here. Uh, you get 4,544 clicks for $8,756. So every little ad and every little click on Google is a lot of money. Which one did we click on? What was that? Women's shoes, was it? Let's look for a cheaper one. What's this one? Heel cheap? Heels cheap? What's that? Sexy heels? There we go. 73 cents. Online sucker knee, knee boots. There we go. Let's see how much that's going to cost. Knee boots. There we go. It's about the same. Look at that. $9.25.22 per click. Let's go waste some money. Hey, about that. We'll go over here to go to Google. Let's go. Let's charge some. Let's make Google some money. Here we go. We'll go to Google and type in. What was it? Shoes? Shoes? High heels? No, what was one of the words? High heels, was it? High heels? Shoes? Okay, here we go. Woo. Look, each one of these people is paying, what did I say? A dollar fifty cents? Here we go. Oh, somebody just paid a dollar fifty cents right there. Let's do it again. Oh, somebody just got charged a dollar fifty cents right there. Let's do it again. Oh, so geez, I just wasted like four dollars right there. Oh. I can do this all day. Then you would think that, hey, wouldn't it be nice? You would think Google would probably make some software that kept clicking on people's links and they'd be making billions and billions and billions of dollars, wouldn't they? And there's an ad right here. Let's look at that one. Boom. Oh, somebody just paid. These people just paid. And you pay for different types of ads. You can pay for ads and with the picture in it. You can pay for just a text link ad, things like that. Yeah. Oh, look at all these down here. Boom! Somebody just got charged a dollar fifty. <coughs> okay. Was that fun or what? No. Okay. <laughs> so again, I just wanted to point out. I uh, hope you understand a little bit more about how Google works. Google is all about words. The internet's all about words. Searching's all about words. How about Yahoo? Do they do the same thing? Does anybody even use Yahoo for search? Mm -mm. No, I don't know. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. What was it? High heel shoes? Shoes for women. Look at that. There we go. We got ads there. Look, ad, ad, ad. Ad. Look, everything is an ad on this page. Everything. Ad. 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 Everything's an ad. There was no organic links. What was organic again? It was not paid for. Okay. Organic links are links that don't pay. Everything here is all pay. Every single one. Every single link you see here is pay. It says ad right there. Ad right there. Ad right there. I want to get a map telling me where I can buy my shoes. I like Yahoo. Oh, here, look down below. Here we go. Here's an organic one. Organic one. Organic. No ad, no ad. When it says cached, what does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean? Cached, cached, cached. Well, cached means that it's stored, okay? Which means that the data has been stored somewhere. Okay, most likely it's been cached in in Yahoo, so you don't have to, it doesn't have to go out and get the information from the server. Yahoo has actually stored that data for you. I, I would assume that's what cache is. There it is. Amazon Prime. Well, those are some high heels. You have to be a ballerina to walk in those ones. I 
Okay. Yahoo does the same thing. I think Yahoo actually uh, sells more ads than than uh, Google? Google. Yes. That's, that sounds about right. But you know, you could see why you got they got ads on every every damn link. <laughs> so, I don't know. We didn't look for high heel shoes under Flickr, right? And of course, what are some other popular websites for uh, shopping and things with Pinterest? Anybody do Pinterest? Who does Pinterest? No. Pinterest, come on. Pinterest. T R E S T. Is that Pinterest? Yep. Dot com? You got to put in Pinterest, Pinterest to get to it. Pinterest, Pinterest. And then they. Jenny? Who's Jenny? <laughs> Who's Jenny? Why am I Jenny? Why am I following Jenny? Somebody has been, no, it's logged in. Follow Jenny. I'm following Jenny. Pinterest doesn't let you look at things. How about um, Etsy? Etsy, Winello does. You guys like Etsy? Etsy? Uh oh, did I say? Hello, I, oh. you have been selected. Oh my, I must have spelled it wrong. Woo, I'm lucky I didn't get a porn site there. I was I was teaching at a high school one time. Did I tell you that story already? No. Oh, I was teaching. And back in the early days in the 90s, there were all kinds of different search engines. There was um, Excite, there was Alta Vista. There was web crawler. There was ask. There was all these different search engines. One of them was called um, um, Hotbot, B O T H O T B O T Hotbot. And I'm I'm teaching at a high school, and I typed in hot box, and I hit return. <laughs> what a mistake that was! You know, it's like naked person on the screen, ah, trying to click <laughs> off it. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Etsy, Etsy. Oh, I spelled it wrong. There we go. I put an S T Y instead of Etsy. Okay, Etsy is a place where you can search for crafts mostly, but they have all kinds of different searching. You know, well, I got Etsy, Etsy community shop now. Hey, and gifts for get your Valentine's a present. Is it Valentine's Day this weekend? Yeah. Oh, wow, I'm going to Oregon, Oregonians. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Oh, I didn't log out, did I? <coughs> well, I didn't log out of this either, did I? <coughs> I didn't log out of this. Okay, got two more things to do before we leave. Now, we didn't do any uh, word stuff today because I didn't feel like doing word stuff today. So next class, we'll have to do uh, word things. We're going to do, you're going to have to make a paper in the MLA format. We'll learn how to do that. A paper? Well, just making a sample. <laughs> okay, but before we, before we leave today, let's talk about your, your, your main paper that you're going to do for class. And I'll have a handout, hopefully next class, if not next week, at the beginning of next week. It'll list all the things you need to include in your paper. But your paper is going to be on computer parts. Computer parts. And you're going to have to price what it costs to buy a computer. Like an actual computer. Like an actual computer, yeah. You're going to have to go and do some price and, and, and talk about the different parts of it, okay? So let's just do a little talk about computer parts before we go. And then we'll leave in a couple minutes. Okay, so some of the things you might want to consider knowing is all the different pieces of the computer. Okay, so let's talk about computer parts. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, again, your first paper is going to be all on computer parts. Okay, so in your paper, you need to write about how much does it, uh, you know, how much does the RAM cost? How much does the hard drive? If I buy a solid state drive compared to a regular spinning drive, how fast does a hard drive spin? Spinny drive. Okay, 
So we need to learn all these things before we write this paper. I can talk about it on the board. We can write things on the board. We need to learn how a DVD player works, even though some computers don't have DVDs anymore, right? The Macs don't have DVDs. Why does the Mac get rid of the DVD? Well, of course, they want you to buy and download the videos off iTunes, right? Plus, uh, you know, Sony owns the patents to all the DVD stuff. So, you know, why give Sony money? If I put a DVD drive in my computer, I got to pay Sony patents and you know things like that. Apple, yeah, they want to make more. Okay, so <coughs> you're gonna have to know what kind of video card you buy. What kind? How, how much video card? How much? What's a good video card? How do we measure what's a good video card? I don't know. We have to learn those things. Okay. We need to learn how fast. Uh, now, we'll just point out the car, or the, the car, the hard drive spins like your car does. You anybody got a tachometer in your car, that little thing, that little needle goes like this as you're going down the street, you're always at five, right? No, I'm just kidding. All right, you got a little tachometer? Okay, that's what? Revolutions per minute. All right, RPMs, revolutions per minute. Hard drive spin at the same. Revolutions per minute. The standard hard drive spins around 7,000. RPM. Cheaper ones would be 5,000 RPM. The ones that don't spin at all are called solid state drives. Those are usually cost a little bit more. So we have to learn all that stuff. Uh, we have to learn about um, sound cards. What kind of sound card goes in there? We have to learn about what is it? A to D and D to A. A to D refers to analog to digital and digital to analog. Right? When you hear music coming out your speaker, what are we listening to? We're not listening to bits and bytes, are we? There's no ones and zeros. I'm listening to sound waves, okay? How does the computer computer convert the digital data to sound waves? We need to learn how to do that, and we're going to talk about that. Um, what else are we going to learn about? Uh, all the different parts. What does the motherboard do and all those things? There is a sound card in there. There's a video card. Uh, um, what kind of video card should I buy? Uh, what kind of processor should I buy? What is the, the megahertz speed? My first Macintosh computer cost $4,000 and it was a 25 megahertz processor. 25 megahertz. I think I paid $600 for like, you know, like 4 gigs of RAM or some, you know, 4 megabytes of RAM or something like that. It was outrageous. Yes, I still have the computer today. It's here at West Valley. I'll put it in my shrine when I'm, you know, when, when they build a building for me. I'm going to put my name on the outside. I'll put it in a glass case in the front. Um, DVD drives, we got to learn about what a DVD drives. How much megabytes does a DVD store? This is on the first test. I'm going to tell you the answers right now. We're going to go over it on the board, but today I don't want to draw on the board anymore. I'm tired of drawing on the board. I'm just going to tell you some of them right now. Okay, A DVD drive, DVD store. A single layer DVD stores 4.7 gigabytes of data. A dual layer DVD stores 8 0.5 gigabytes of data. That one's on the test. A dual layer DVD stores 8.5 gigabytes. Around 8.5, I think. Yeah. Dual layer DVD. We'll learn the difference between single and dual layer when I get to the board and start drawing on the board. How much was single layer stores 4.7 gigabytes. Do you ladies get that one? Are you paying attention? Did you write it on your test sheet? No. no. Write it on your test sheet. A DVD is spelled D I S C. D I S C. In a hard drive in your computer, spelled D I S K. <laughs> Why is the difference? Okay, so if we look. When, when we refer to the hard drive in your computer, the hard drive in your computer, it's called D-I-S-K, my disk in my hard drive. Okay, that's, that's a hard drive. And we have a D-I-S-C. You ever notice that? Disk, mm -hmm. right? For your music CD. CD. D-I-S-K, it's hard drive. D-I-S-C. Okay, then with this one, it's because it's magnetic. There's actual physical <laughs> equipment that's touching. It's magnetic. A DVD stores data. Optical. The laser. 
to see for optical, okay, or magnetic. That's the difference. Optical, magnetic. Hey, look, see K. D-I-S-K right here. See disc. Magnetic. Disc, okay. Yeah. This would be D-I-S-C, <coughs> like on your CD. You look at your CD sometimes. Uh, you probably don't even have CDs anymore. There yeah. used to be these things called CDs that stored music on them. <laughs> they were called D-I-S-C, disc. There used to be. Yeah. I don't know. They're getting rid of all that stuff. Okay, so we'll look at that. We'll look at that, that, that. I don't know. Will ever happen like how it happened to like cassettes that they'll eliminate CDs? Yeah, I don't know. The, the disc will, I don't know. Buy them. Yeah, I don't know. They'll go away the way of the record player, or the uh, the LP or the vinyl. They'll be in the back, and you know when Tire Records went out of business, all those people with their record players were. Oh, it's my record player. 